Mercury, Saturn, and a failed moon mission. Not really instilling words of confidence considering last time round we left Mr. Blue and Cody Phillips with a rather terrifying decision. And that is, of course, are they going to be trying to achieve orbit around the moon today? And now, with that 137 meters per second trajectory change all completed, their fate isn't quite sealed yet, but we are attempting to go for a lunar orbit. This change in trajectory unfortunately does mean that I'm going to have to spend another 900 meters per second of delta V once I arrive at the moon just to slow down into a nice low lunar orbit. Obviously, the route that we have taken over to our closest celestial neighbor has been rather bad, to, to put it bluntly, and now, well, we fire up those engines and pretty much have sealed their fate. There is no coming back from this. I could have saved some fuel and slung shot around the moon and tried to get a return trajectory to Earth with the remaining fuel that I would have had if I would have not captured at the moon. However, that is now not going to happen. And this is me figuring out I don't have enough fuel to get these two back. It's gonna take me about 850 meters per second to get back to a position around Earth that will mean that I capture Earth and can safely descend, you know, just a, a normal return. So what do I do to get that Delta V back? Well, we start dumping everything that is not required for this mission. So that includes all of the wastewater we've accumulated, waste that we've accumulated, Accumulated. And that still wasn't quite enough. So what else can we get rid of? Oh yes, that's right. We can remove some of the food, water and oxygen. Because the Kerbals don't need that. Well, they, no, they do need that to live. But this vehicle or, or this mission is overpacked with those kind of life support. That kind of life support even. So if I get rid of some that I don't need, that does actually give me a bit more Delta V. Still not enough to make it back though. And I haven't plotted out a complete burn to Earth. I haven't used up all of the Hydrolox that is in this stage. And that's because this vessel is powered by fuel cells and they run on Hydrolox. If I were to use all of my resources in this stage, well, we wouldn't actually have power when we get back home and they would die. But luckily we had enough RCS fuel just about to make it back by the Good of my teeth, we've made it. And I know, with a perigee of about 32 kilometers, they will safely capture back at Earth. As long as I use descent mode on the capsule so I don't turn them into green piles of goo. We <laughs> follow around with Principia there. I love that view in Principia when you're coming back to Earth. And unfortunately, the game crashes. But hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Gets Real. I was able to bring these two safely down. Over the course of this episode, we will be seeing another moon mission because that wasn't a failure. In fact, that was brilliant. We gained a lot of science. We were able to bring those two Kerbals safely back home. And yeah, they, they, they had nothing to worry about at all. The, nothing would have gone wrong. I had complete faith in my abilities of designing that craft that it would succeed the mission. I absolutely didn't. I was terrified and I probably should have played the safer route, but I wanted to get that contract all completed. We did pick up another Lunar Orbiter contract and now we are at the Space Center just waiting for some of our transfer windows to open up because I don't really have an awful lot going on at the moment. We are waiting for the Colossus Complex to be finished, and basically there's, there's not an awful lot in low Earth orbit that I really want to be doing at the moment. But I am gaining a huge amount of funding a day, which is super nice. But here we have on the 16th of May, five months in before a single launch to send Shackleton 8 over to Mercury. Now. This is being launched on top of an Odyssey launch vehicle, which is something we've not seen for quite a while. The Odyssey launch vehicle is quite small. It can't take an awful lot up to low Earth orbit. I have been using the Pinnacle, which is a bigger rocket, to send things to Venus. 
How on earth am I going to be getting a Mercury flyby with something a lot smaller? Well, I'm sure nobody asks, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad that that thought may, might have popped into your head. And that's because I'm doing something that I have never done myself. We are going to be using Venus as a gravity assist. Well, we're, we're going to be doing a gravity assist around Venus so that I can get myself over to Mercury. Now, I say I've never done this. I did actually once in Kerbal Gets Real, the original, use, I believe, Jupiter to send probes over to Saturn. Not even Saturn. Neptune and Uranus. I said that in a really weird order then. I should have gone Uranus and Neptune. But I didn't plot that out. That, that wasn't something that I personally planned. That was something that Cosmonaut Crash told me about, and I thought, well, I'm going to use that information. This transfer window, though, I did this all myself and managed to get quite a nice flyby of Mercury, so long as everything goes to plan. We have fired up the single RL-10 engine on the trans-Venus injection stage, and with that being done, well, that's this stage of the mission complete. We will let go of this small little probe, and the final burn will be performed by that tiny little probe that is on top. And I think it's... I, I'm, I'm sure I showed it, but it's not a huge amount of Delta V. Unfortunately, decoupling it meant that <laughs> it did change our trajectory a bit, but with a little bit of finagling with the Principia flight plan, I was able to get a nice close flyby of 33 kilometers of Mercury all done. We will need to perform a burn at Venus to do this though. And then, not even two weeks later, on the 30th of May, or actually no, that is exactly two weeks later, Shackleton 9, we're sending something to orbit Saturn. This episode is going to be exploring the far reaches of our solar system. Oh, we're not going to get there yet. Oh, actually, no, I say that. We will be getting to Mercury by the end of this episode, but Saturn is bloody far away. It's so far away that it's gonna take about five years to get there, I think. I will have to, ch well, well, fact check that, but I know where I'm up to in this save at the moment, which is currently 1971, that's where I've got footage filmed up to. This hasn't arrived yet, and we are sending this in 1967. So it's gonna be a long time before we actually see this arrive at Saturn. But there we go, we have made our way into orbit. Absolutely fantastic, brilliant. It's exactly what we want to see. And it is going to be just a, a small burn of 8,200-ish meters per second of delta V to get over to Saturn. That's not a, a complicated, big, long burn in the slightest. It's not going to take me about seven minutes to do that well. 6 minutes and 13 seconds is all I have in this stage, and I am basically going to need to use every last drop of Hydrolox that is located on here. Once again, we have successful ignition of those two RL-10s. These RL-10s are now incredibly reliable. They have a reliability of 99.81%, so that means there's a 0.2% chance, or not even that, of them failing at a critical point in a mission that definitely isn't going to happen. No, why would I even say that? Why would I put failed moon mission in the title of this video if, if those things are so damn reliable? Well, <laughs> we may be uh, seeing some of that later on. But that's going to be coming in a little bit, and we are able to get over to Saturn with a nice close encounter after performing a deep space maneuver in a few hundred days. Yes, I, I said it takes a long time to get over to Saturn. Anyway, we are now coming into the vehicle assembly building, and this is actually taken out of time. This should really be coming at the end of this episode, but I thought I don't really want to end an episode on a VAB section, so I'm going to just shove it in the middle, just kind of grab it and brute force it in wherever I can. And what we are going to be designing here is going to be a mission to go to both Ceres and Vesta. Not at the same time, I am going to be launching two of these, and yeah, they 
basically, I'm going to try and get orbits around Ceres and Vesta, because I would quite like to visit those by the end of this series. Once again, as I did in Kerbal Gets Real, I would like to visit every single celestial body in the solar system, and obviously we haven't sent anything over there yet. Much akin to what I was talking about in the last episode, being quite far away from the sun, well, we are going to be powering this with a huge, massive RTG on the side, so that I can run every single scientific experiment that I do have on this probe. And there is going to be a lot, because I don't want this to just do a flyby of them. No, I want to orbit those rocks, and I have Scansat on this install. I know, a very terrible idea for an install of RP1, but I want to get some beautiful imagery of those rocks in the asteroid belt. I think that would be very nice. It would mean that in the future, say I want to land crew or something along those lines on, say, Ceres to make a big base at Ceres, like in the, the Expanse. Yeah, that's the Ceres. Oh my god, so many Ceres. <laughs> There's too much series. Anyway, yeah, I would quite like to get imaging of those rocks. Well, one of them's a dwarf planet. One of them is just an asteroid, I believe. Ceres is a dwarf planet, I think. And Vesta is a asteroid. Yeah, I would like to get those just so, you know, it, it looks cool. Scansat looks really awesome. I really like it. It is a shame that it eats ram for breakfast. But anyway... We have built the vast majority of the probe, and in order to slow down, because I'm going to need a lot of Delta V, I have decided that I'm going to attempt to use an SRB for this, which may not have been the best of ideas, considering they can be not necessarily unreliable, they are pretty reliable, however the variance in them means that I might not quite get the orbit that I would have so desired, however because they are just incredibly efficient for burns like this, well, it's realistically the only way that I'm going to be able to get the Delta V that I require in order to capture around series. I believe this one is going to series. I'm not entirely sure. I believe the two different probes are slightly different that I sent to each one. But that is basically the build of that complete. And once again, we return to the Space Center. And I did mention, yeah, those maps are going to be nice for a future base. One thing that I have been working on recently is actually, well, new RP1, let me get my words out here, has scenarios now. You can start in 1957, which is fantastic. You can skip the whole sounding rocket grind and just go straight to getting into orbit, which is brilliant. I'm going to talk about this whilst I perform these deep space maneuvers because they're just deep space maneuvers. And that got me thinking. To a future series on this channel, I know it's probably a little bit optimistic considering I'm probably only about halfway through this, but I feel like I'm going to be doing the exact same that I did last time round, and we will have a next millennia redux coming at some point. That's going to be so far off into the future, it's not even really worth thinking about now. But it did get me a little bit excited, and so I have started creating my own custom scenario for that, which will be pretty cool. That will be a long ways off. Anyway, 24th of October 1967, Shackleton 8, which is going to be our Mercury flyby, arrives at Venus. Now this is where we're going to be performing that all-important burn to actually get us over to Mercury. And there we go, we have fired up the engine and we are getting very close indeed. Six million meters away at the moment, not quite as close as I had originally planned, but that's still going to be a flyby of Mercury. And we have to come back to Shackleton 9 to also do its deep space maneuver because we had a bit of a wonky trajectory to begin with. But you can see we're only about two and a half million meters away now from the, the surface of Saturn, if you can really call it the surface. Maybe, maybe not, but we are going to have a nice close approach and it's gonna take us 1,104 days to get there. So actually a little bit quicker than I originally said. Now, clearly I got a little bit confused with reading earlier on, and it was the 24th of September that Shackleton 8 arrived at Venus. 
because on the 11th of October, we are going to be launching Void 3, which will be our third attempt at sending crew over to the moon to orbit it, to have a good look at that cheesy surface, and then hopefully return them home. Now, one thing that I have not mentioned about these missions is that because I'm using the Gemini capsule, unfortunately, I'm not gaining an awful lot of science for each trip over to the moon. If I was using the Apollo capsule, that has better scientific experiments on board. Unfortunately, the Apollo capsule, though, is just so damn expensive that I have not been able to afford it yet. That will be coming in a much further in the future video, and I think I think, if I am correct, I have bought it in around 1971. But here we are going to be attempting our translunar injection. And of course, I have mentioned it, the reliability on these engines is 99.81%, 0.19% chance of failure, and what happens? Well, one of them fails to ignite which means my Kerbals are now currently stranded in low Earth orbit because I have a very, very slim chance of getting them home. Basically, what I'm going to be doing here is using my RCS to point me retrograde and keep trying to burn to get my Perigee to a point where they can safely get back home. I need it to be low enough in the atmosphere that they are going to be all right when they return. And this is not going very well. Because currently my perigee, well actually no, now that I have slung the capsule off the service module, we have managed to get down to about 70 kilometers, still not really a good area. So I'm going to do what I like to call the N9 seesaw maneuver. I'm fairly sure he did this in an episode of For All Kerbal Kind. And basically use the RCS on the capsule to lower my perigee to a point where I'm going to be happy that these guys aren't going to be brutally killed during the re-entry procedure. And now having got it down to 59 kilometers, I am quite content that this will be a successful, well, not a successful mission, but we will be able to bring Sir Knightley Wilson and Spian Hughes back down home. Now, those are named after patrons, and their names are going to be changing because I didn't quite get them right, and I profusely apologize for that. But we have successfully brought them back is the parachute did go off and yeah we are home fabulous and of course the next thing to do is go straight into the vehicle assembly building to try and stop this from happening ever again and putting some retro rockets on this in case an engine fails around low earth orbit now this is not really the best solution for this and i'll quickly mention this before we get to the mercury flyby i should have offset the rl10 so that if one of them fails they're still kind of pointing through the center of mass and hopefully it means it won't spin out of control because it did. It really spun out of control and to be honest, those guys probably were very sick from that maneuver that I made them endure. But anyway, Mercury, we have made it. In a single year, we have launched this craft, we have sent it via Venus and now we have arrived at Mercury. And that burn there was actually a quick little burn to bring it back round to Mercury in about a year's time. That's right, this isn't going to be the only time we visit Mercury with with this vehicle. We are going to be doing multiple flybys. I think I've done three already where I'm up to, so we will be getting lots of views of Mercury over the coming episodes. Yeah, we've still got 386 meters per second of Delta V left in this craft, and it's only going to take 25 to actually get an encounter again, which is absolutely fantastic. That gives us, what, about 10 chances to keep flying by Mercury? And I will keep doing that for the massive science gains that we may achieve if that's the route that I want to go down. Although that being said, I probably won't do that many because that would get quite boring. 